This is Johnny Dosco. Stay tuned for another score sheet podcast. Holy Kadelka. Hi, and welcome to another score sheet podcast. Today, I'm happy to say we have Todd Zola of mastersball.com as our guest. How are you, Todd? Doing great, Jeff. That yourself? I'm doing well. It's a beautiful day out here in California. Todd is a co-founder of Masters Ball, which is a website that started back 1997, so 15 years ago, given various fantasy advice columns and projections and all. Do you want to tell the folks a little bit about Masters Ball, Todd? For those of you guys that have been around for a long time, uh, was Jason Gray, who is now a scout for the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, founded the site and asked me to join him as one of his uh, one of the original writers. We made a, a pretty good team for, for a number of years, providing you know the yin and the yang of some fantasy analysis. Jason was more the player analysis guy, the scout, that sort of thing, and I was more the strategical projections and evaluations and that sort of thing. So we kind of fed off of each other really well. Then as a site, we merged with fantasybaseball.com for a couple of years. Once that arrangement was over. Jason had already left to go to ESPN, and I got his blessing to relaunch Masters Ball, which I did. And a year later, we he hooked up uh, with our friend, you know him, Jeff, uh, Lar Michaels. We hooked up with him in uh, Creative Sports and formed one site, and that's where we are now. So Creative Sports and Masters Ball merged. We kept the Masters Ball name. Lar runs the free content, the daily articles. I'm in charge of the Platinum subscription product, and we seem to be doing pretty well. Hey, you guys have, between you and Lar, about, I don't know what, 40, 50 years experience in the fantasy field. Uh, probably. He's got me beat, but I would say uh, combined, that probably is a, yeah, it makes some sense. Yeah, I know. Well, I've known you guys for probably most of those 15 years from back in the first days of Chandler's AFL conferences. Yeah, we uh, we, we started going, I think, around 2000. We've been fixtures ever since. I'm a and invited, you know, an, op- an open invitation with Ron to speak wherever, you know, whenever, you know, it'd be at the spring or if I'm invited to speak in Arizona. So Masters Ball gives various advice, as you were telling me earlier. You've got a message board up where folks can post questions and they get discussed. Um, you've got a subscription model, or I guess you give out some free information also, don't you? Well, what we do is we have, you know, we have one or two articles a day uh, available for free strategy, player analysis, some stream of conscience. You know, Lars, myself a little bit. Sometimes we'd like to talk about things other than baseball. So we we have one a day. We have what we call the master's blog. So if any of us have something to say on a day where it's not our regularly scheduled article, we, we put it over on the master's blog. We have an AL report, an NL report. I do strategy. Uh, so, you know, Brian Walton from Tout Wars uh, does a weekend piece where he, he talks a lot about Tout Wars and some other things as well. And then we do have the Platinum subscription service, which is mostly projections and player profiles. And if you're into the Excel tools, which is sort of my niche, developing a whole bunch of Excel tools to help with your player analysis, player comparison, tracking your team, looking at some of the advanced statistics, that sort of thing. So it's not not a lot of news, so to speak, but you get everything you need as far as preparing yourself for the draft. And like you mentioned, we do have a... A message board that's dedicated just to the Platinum subscribers. So if you want to post a question, we promise a staff response within 24 hours. The big thing is, you, you know, you got a question or projection, you got a question or profile, you're going to go right to the source because I do them all. So, you know, if you want to know how come, you know, a certain player is projected for a certain amount of bats or a certain amount of home runs, you're not going to get a, you know, I think this is why. You're going to get why because it was I did it. And I'm going to answer it. And, you know, so that, that that's people seem to like that because uh, uh, and we explain the methods. So you seem to have more trust in the actual numbers if they know their explanations coming from the guy who did it. Well, plus, I think the method is maybe more important than the final number that gets spit out. Um, just understanding how someone like yourself comes up with the projections. Yeah, we're pretty open source about both our projections and our values. So, yeah, that's the, exactly like you're saying. It's one thing to, to look at a number. If you, have a, if you trust the method behind it, it means that much more to you, and you can apply it. You, know, you now know what you can do with it as opposed to just it being there. Right, and then Laura and Todd both play score sheets, so it's not just rochester information. You can ask questions a little more specific to score sheet and also get a score sheet-related answer. Yep, and uh, not you know it's it's, it's uh, we also do Stratomatic, but you know it's but yeah I mean I've been doing 
score sheet that got me into the BP Kings League. Uh, I'm sure a lot of your listeners are at least familiar with the league and title. They got me into it a couple years ago. Uh, Jason did. I'm a score sheet addict at this point. Well, I like to hear that. Let's see. So maybe I got a couple questions about some specific players. I don't know if this is your field of expertise, but what do you think about you, Darvish, and the impact he might have this year? I mean, basically, I mean, it's more of a general. I mean, I, I, I don't, you know, it's more of the, the general way that you need to approach these sorts of imports, Japanese imports, in that they came from a condensed season, a whole lot less travel, uh, a smaller baseball. So it's really hard to get a, a direct translation from what they were doing in Japan to what they might do in the States. So everybody out there, they want to have the next new shiny toy, especially him, because he's real shiny. And he, you know, he, so I think that people are, are a little bit too optimistic as to what he might do. And I'm not going to compare him to Dice K or any of that stuff. It's just, there's just too much unknown coming over. I don't think enough is made of a small, the smaller baseball as well. That yeah. could, I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, I mean, it really, it is a different game. And, you know, when you think about the money Texas is going to have to pay, that $50 million posting fee and probably 60 or $7 million contract, it seems like for $120 million you can get a pretty good established major league pitcher from the viewpoint of a GM, anyhow. Well, there's a catch. And I know this a little bit from living in Boston. Uh, from a financial point of view, the Red Sox are thrilled with a Dice K contract because in marketing and merchandising to Japan, they've more than made up their money. Now, from a from a performance point of view, maybe not so much, but from a dollars and cents between the T-shirts and the shirts and the jerseys and the rights to watch the ball games, they and, and I think Darvish is even more rock star status than uh, than than Dice K or I, as I call him Dice BB. I don't think they're so worried about it from that point of view. Oh, I didn't really think about the that, but I guess for us as a fantasy player, the question is: Is you Darvish worth, you know, making your top pick if you're in a continuing league and the only players available are maybe guys that have been cut from other teams or free agents, you know? So if you want Ryu Darvish in a in a keeper league, you're going to have to spend. Well, Pujols, of course, will go first in American League, but Darvish is probably going to go second in a lot of leagues. Yeah, I I would say yeah. Um trying to think of anybody that also may have come over yeah i mean as far as that goes if you are uh, al only or whatever and it's uh you know it's depending upon well no suspetus is probably going to sign with the with the with the national league so that would be an interesting that would be an interesting uh dichotomy do you go for uh the, the, the cuban kid in center field or do you go for darvish you know i'd probably go for uh suspetus but that's uh but that's just me i definitely go for pool holes though <laughs> yeah that pool holes guy seems like a pretty logical first pick if he's available in your American League. Yeah, um, I would think. Yeah. And then is there any other player that jumps out at you that you think might be undervalued in a lot of drafts this year? I think a couple of guys that are just now starting to pick up a little momentum, mainly because of a little bit of a role change. I think, and I don't know how deep you want to go here, but I, I'm I'm liking a guy like Chris Heisey this year on Cincinnati. I, I, I believe at this point that he's going to get the playing time. I don't see Cincinnati at least I don't see them getting a full-time outfielder, so at worst he's going to be a platoon. I mean, they may get one of those veteran presence-type bench guys, but I think if he hits, and, you know, Dusty's not going to care about the the walks and the OBP and all that other stuff. He's just going to want the guy to hit homers, and that he can do. So, uh, you know, a guy that I kind of like a little bit, I mean, I don't know, he's not the best score sheet player because of the OBP, but uh, I, I'm kind of liking Chris Heisey a bit. Similarly, Diane Vecieto in the in the American League, sim, you know, he he now is just happening upon some more playing time with the trade of Quentin. It's similar to Darvish in that we're not quite sure what we're going to get, but the Cubans, as compared to the Japanese imports, seem to be holding their you know holding their numbers a little bit better. At least maybe it take a year or two to to get there, but if you think of Kendris Morales and and Alexis Ramirez. They seem to, you know, come as advertised more often than not. And uh, I think Vicieto is a guy that, with the playing time, and you know, now that they find a position for him in right field, could provide you some power. And he is a guy that that's going to walk a bit, so he could help you out in the score sheet type uh, type deal. Yeah, I think it is true that in score sheet more so than in roto, the home runs are. I mean, of course they're valuable. They're valuable in real life, but yeah, unlike rotisserie, that the walks and the on base percentage are 
a pretty key item, and so you do need to pay attention to that. Oh, sure. Which is, yeah, le learn. I don't want to say learn it the hard way, but definitely, definitely figure that out pretty quick. Yeah. Well, I think. I mean, that was the thrust of that whole Moneyball book, right? That every baseball fan's probably read or seen the movie by now. That on base percentages, you know, walks aren't sexy. They don't have a saying chicks dig walks, but they do win ball games or they do lead to scoring runs. Well, what a walk is, it is not an out. And anything that is not an out is good. Yeah. Well, it puts guys on base and, yeah, loads you up for the guy behind you to get an RBI. Yeah, and then, um, what do you think? You know, David Freeze, we saw him, of course, in the postseason. And what do you think he's going to do this year? I don't think he's going to do as well as he, did in, as he did in the postseason. He's a weird guy in that he's has a couple of chronic injuries, and they're supposed to be healed. I guess it wouldn't be chronic if it was healed. But you know, and then but now he had a couple of nicky knack injuries too. So I don't know if you can write him down for 150 games. Remember this time last year, they were talking about you know benching him a bit and only giving him 120, 130 games. He played a little bit more than that. So I mean, I'm a, I'm more concerned or as concerned about his playing time as I am about his actual performance. So you put the two of them together, I'm probably not going to be invested in him at all because I'm either one or the other, you know, he's not going to live out to the performance or, you know, he's only going to play 120 games. Even at a weak position, uh, I'm not, I don't think that Fries is going to be on my radar. I mean, he's, he's got power. I mean, good, good kid. I mean, glad to, you know, good to see what he did. It was kind of, you know, all, you know, it was fun to see, you know, good people hit good home runs and that, that for sure. I don't know. Even at third base, I don't think I'll be uh, drafting Freeze too much. No, well, it was a good story, that's for sure. But you're right. If you, he's probably going to go fairly high in drafts, or cost a lot if you're in an auction league. And he does seem likely to not return the the investment you have to make to get him. Huh. Well, that's all very interesting. You know, Todd, it's been great talking to you, and um, I'm sure we'll be chatting with you again this off season. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks at the uh, first pitch in San Francisco. But we, you know, we'll play it by ear. All right. That, that sounds good. Thanks.